Hello and welcome to a new video about how to uh, animate a crankshaft. Yeah? Now uh, we managed to get from our from our control from our little ESP32 with the help of an encoder onto MQDT and from MQDT to ThingWorks and from ThingWorks we animated this crank drive. So I wanted to make now a decent uh, casing. Okay, so I started, I want this thing to be, that we can carry it around simply, yeah? So not wired or something like this, I want to make it wireless because we have, uh, we have Wi-Fi there, so why not make it wireless? So I needed a power source. Power source, I have then decided to use a, a power bank I have already, yeah? So it was quite a big power bank. Yeah. Uh, so I decided let's build the case around this. All right. So I have made a model. I've made a model of this of this power bank. The model looks like that. Yeah. Here is the power bank. I have not usually there are the USB ports, the charging and the the, the USB ports. I have not drawn that. Okay. Because I just was interested in the size to build the case around it. I know how my how my uh, power bank looks like. So I made a lower case part here. Huh? This is the lower case part. I will now remove the power bank. Uh, this is the lower case part where here is room for the power bank. Here is room to for the USB cables. Huh? We need we need room there. Yeah. And yeah, maybe I want to screw them this thing together, yeah, with the help of M5 screws. Yeah? So I decided to make here holes for the nuts, okay, hexagon nuts, and I will make them head is it head nuts in English? Head nuts? Hutmuttern it's in German? This closed nuts, which are closed, because then they act already as, as some sort of supports here, uh, so that it's not sitting on the ground and being scratched or something like that, so that you have some feet. All right, so this was this was one. Uh, you wonder probably why I made these holes. Uh, this was simply because I then thought, okay, I put in I put in the the, the power bank, then it looks like that. Yeah. And then I have to place somewhere the, the electronic. All right, I have to place somewhere the electronic, and I have drawn this. Should look like that. Yeah. I wanted to to place the the ESP32 here at the bottom, yeah. and on the top I want to make these electronics, and I want. Well, simply that it does not take too many, too much space, yeah. And I will build it directly up on the on the uh, power bank. <laughs> up on the power bank, this USB board is at the same side as the USB board of the power bank, yeah. And I also decided to make here these hexagon holes for nuts, so that I can. If I'm not running around with the power bank, if this is just too bulky for me, yeah, then I will simply use just this part, and that's it. Yeah. So this is this is the part I'm I'm I want to use. All right. So here, this one I just added for additional connections. Here is the board where I want to connect my my. Uh, Decoder plus minus and A and B, all right. And here are to do the two LEDs for IoT uh, server and and net connection with the two with the two uh, resistors. Well, that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. And th this this gray part, this big gray part, is the is the part where we are covering the power bank, all right? So, in combination, 
it looks like that book. Yeah? And these things, yeah, which would act as feed if we are not using the power bank, are fitting perfectly, hopefully, <laughs> at least the drawing fitting perfectly into these strange holes. Yeah? Now it looks like one big part. Yeah? Let's come to the to the upper part. Here's the upper part. Here, this is how I want to have. I want this to have look. I want this to look like. So there is the big encoder I've shown you. Yeah, the big encoder, uh, which will be mounted here in this in this upper casing. It should fit here. Here are the holes. Here are the holes for the two LEDs. Yeah, here is some some hole for these additional connectors, and the rest should be inside. Yeah. So. If I place this up here, yeah, then it should look like that. That's the goal. Yeah? And here, we screw this thing together with different length M5 uh, screws. Yeah? Here's the power bank. Here's then the, the electronics, a little bit apart. Yeah? Uh, in here, in between, in the, in the, the upper part and between the up, the, the, the part which is holding the electronics and the part which is holding the power bank, we could place some elastic material so that the power bank is not, not shaking in there. Yeah. Here would be the USB parts of the power bank which will be connected to here. Yeah. I also made here a little bit, uh, hole yeah, or spare area. That we can connect, still connect this to to the USB port here, because the the, the connector also needs some space. Mm. Hopefully, this is enough. Uh, I always make rounds simply because it looks better, and it. If you make something round, it is not tending to break too much. Yeah? Here also round, yeah? because if you make it a corner, then there is a lot of stress in the corner. If you make it round. Yeah. And I also tried to find areas which are very flat so that I can place the 3D printing on there. Huh? Ah. This is how I think it should look like. Then we can turn here. And then we will send to IoT. Oh, then I can run around. Yeah. We maybe with the headset on, with the with the HoloLens on, yeah, running around and 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 and, and simulate it. Yeah? Then I can look everywhere. How's it looking? Oh, nice. Oh. Oh. Now I make STL files of all those parts, slice them and print them. I have a, a color which looks... I, I hope it turns out like that. Let's see. So, print it. of the top case works pretty well I would say look at that looks pretty looks pretty nice I just have to remove the the parts which are also in there there we go which are also only in there to make the bridging easier
career a little bit more and then <laughs> okay the top part is ready the top part is ready let's wait for the others to print out see if we can fit them together okay so i also printed out the down part the, the part where the the echo back the, the battery is inside uh well i already tried this fits pretty nice inside here so that's okay also there's enough room for uh the connectors let's see mm -hmm. clean it clean the support structure hopefully without hurting myself Mm -hmm. That's it. See if the the also fit. <laughs> fit fit. Fit with hands. Put this in. I cut here because it has a little bit, yeah, uh, little bit movement. So we'll use this here. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice. And also here, we still here see the charge indicator. Mm -hmm. This I will also put there. Here, this is this is the part, the upper part, and here this fits. Good. Now it's a brick. <laughs> Let's see. So actually, I should be able. This hole here should be big enough to grab in. Yes, it is. I can still press the buttons inside there. So if I am now, where is the cable? I just removed the cable. It's on the ground. So I should be able to plug this in here, yes, and I should be able to plug it in the power bank. And this thing should start to connect to my... It's online. Also connected to MQTT. Nice. Just have to buy a shorter cable. I think that's it. Mm. It almost fits. <laughs> nice. Nice. This is the device. A little bit massive because of the big echo pack, big battery inside there. I guess it's working now for days. <laughs> huh. I will see. All right. So th this really turned out, I think, great. Huh? I think it really turned out great. How much power if it is still fully charged? Like I said, the power bank is maybe a little bit too, and it's really heavy. Yeah, 
However, you know, we are mechanical engineers and we need something in our hands. Uh, it's not just like we're electronic guys or something like this. Uh, I've also bought a very short cable. Yeah, so I should be able to plug this in here. Uh, already plugged in. There's nothing, nothing outside. Net. Oh, we are connected to the net. I have also improved already a little bit the, the, the IoT LED. Every time it sends data, it will blink. So it is sending data. <laughs> it is indeed sending data. Nice. I want to make this a little bit more sophisticated still, yeah, so that it feels good, this, this, this turning and so on, that it fits together with my crank drive. I also want to make the, the cylinder in the augmentation. I'm not going to show you this because it's simply, uh, no, it's a little bit boring, I would say, to see me modeling some things here. Yeah? However, in next video, I'm going to show you uh, how it is working now. Okay, so that I show you the experience with the HoloLens, I show you how this thing is behaving and so on. The end result I'm going to show you. Okay, the, the, the detailing I, I do for myself. Yeah, I detail now the experience, I detail now this feeling and then how much, uh, how much degree I should turn with one and so on, so that it really feels good and it fits together somehow. Tune this a little bit. I will not change the, the basic behavior. Yeah? So this thing is sent into MQTT. MQTT is handled by, by Thingworks. Thingworks is then have influence on the augmentation. The augmentation is displayed by our HoloLens. Yeah? I will not change this, of course, because I'm pretty... <laughs> I'm pretty happy it works. Yeah? All right. So uh, next time, end result. Okay. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.